Well, we studied the gradient here, and I'd like to relate it to skiing, which I think you'll see connections are pretty obvious. Here's a mountain in Idaho. It's called the Lost River Peak. It's about 12,000 feet, and it has a ski run that you can see here that goes down through this gully, which is, of course, the Super Gully. This line here is very, very close to what is called the fall line, or the line of steepest descent. And I think you can see that that's the case right here. Well, what does that mean in terms of the gradient? Well, I've drawn a cartoon here that shows some points around a point that is on that fall line. So we can't see it here, but if you took a point on that red line, it would be this point P. These are surrounding points right here. You'll notice that we're going downhill. We're going to a position of lower altitude. The heights are all relative to some standard reference plane. This is an XY plane, basically tangent to the Earth, and the mountain is above this plane, sitting above, and these are the points for given altitudes for a given XY. Well, you notice that in this vicinity here, there's a point that's lower for a, a given distance from the projection of P onto the XY plane. And so that would be along the line of steepest descent. This is a line that is basically on the surface of the snow. The XY plane changes in the coordinates are, for example, right here. Now, depending on the steepness of the slope, there is a vector that is equal to that slope. And the one that corresponds to the steepest drop is the gradient. It actually is a negative of the gradient because we're going downhill. So if we were to go uphill, say, to this point right here, and that was the highest change in altitude going up, then the gradient would be in that positive direction. But it's important to realize that for a two-dimensional system, the gradient vectors are in the xy plane. By two dimensions, I mean the xy plane has associated with it the height that gets you to the surface of the mountain. That's a scalar. So the scalar function is the height versus x and y. The gradient, of course, involves the partial derivatives in the x and y direction. Well, the fall line, again, is the line of steepest descent, and it's in the direction of minus the gradient in the xy plane. So this path appears to be the path of steepest descent, and if you were to deviate from that path, for this particular gully, it looks like you'd be in trouble. You'd be starting to hit rocks. So the snow in this particular case is in the gully, as you might expect. Well, this is another mountain. This is uh, Leatherman Peak in Idaho. Again, 12,000-foot peak. This is the north face. And this is the more common path taken by hot dog skiers right down through here. If we were to come down here, if we ignore these rocks, you'd probably get to a point where you just fall. And I don't know where you would hit, but that's that certainly is along the line of steepest descent. Another possible route, which looks possibly skiable, is down through this gully, through this little notch here, and then down. It'd be very exciting right here because it appears to be on top of an avalanche. So you see here that you can have a variety of paths which you could take. The gradient tells you at any point how fast this is changing. And remember that the vector of the gradient is the negative gradient in the xy plane. So next time, we'll talk about the divergence, which is another operator involving the del operator. And this time, it's going to be operating on a vector field.